Hey guys and girls, this is Gordon Overkill and today we will start a new run of Shadow of the Worm. Sadly we do not get a new poem to start this run, so we directly dive into our adventure. Let's create a new game. We will again play human and we will again play a pilgrim. And again we will be worshipping the lady. We will start in Eisendam just like we did last time. And uh, I was so sad that my sister-in-law didn't make it to the second episode. I am super sorry. I have to apologize to Dini. So uh, today I will rather choose a name of a person I don't like. So it's not that bad if I mess it up. So our new character is called... Bart. And I will not tell you his second name <laughs> because I don't. So here is Bart. <laughs> Bart the Pilgrim. Willpower 14, Charisma 13, and 10, 10 uh, 11 to 12, and all the rest. He's got 6 AP, 9 HP. That's one point more than Dini had in the last run. Let's check his skills. Bart is medium sized, black haired brown eyed and let's check his equipment what does he wear and carry he has a cap like the last guy a mace wayfarer's clothes and leather boots that looks pretty ordinary but he's got different spell books this time instead of the healing spells which we did not learn in the last game he has got smite and soften mm-hmm Smite is a damage spell. Soften is probably a support spell for for melee attacks. So these spells look to me a bit like the spells of a of a hybrid character. Let's talk to all these guys quickly. The blacksmith gives us the quest. Talk to the dog just because he's cute. See what the shop has to offer. A ration, a cypress, a rod. That's not this is a magic rod, maybe. Um, another cypress rod. This one is a lot more expensive. Okay, they seem to be magic. Long spare and a rope. Okay, it's nothing there that I really want to buy. Talk to the plowman. The plowman is the only one to whom we didn't give the 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 the, 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 the jewel yet. So maybe we'll do that in this run, just to find out what the plowman has to offer for us. Let's get in here and get the key from the old season's adventurer. Q. Pick up the iron key. Also, we take the potion, we take the other potion, we take the pickaxe, the fire bomb, the slimy bomb, the stone hammer, metal cap, elm wand, and the buckler. Let us change our weapon to the hammer. Let us change our Offhand to the buckler. Let us use the man. No, 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 no. We take the ones with the higher values this time. Last time we died too quickly. So we'll do it a little bit differently this time. So this is our equipment. And today we want to read the second book, which is the Book of the Nine. So I think that we might get to know something about the gods. But at first, let's see if we can learn Smite. Okay, you memorize the spellbook of Smite. It vanishes in a puff of smoke. So we are now capable of casting Smite a couple of times. Maybe we can also learn Soften. 
Shift before your eyes, you read nothing. Let's try it again. Yeah, and we memorize softness. Okay, it's not too hard to memorize these spells. This time I want to do that, that's for sure. And now the last book that we have left is the book of the nine. First, there was Celeste, Empress of the Heavens, the creator of all things. She created the universe from nothing but her sheer force of will. She made the stars and galaxies, the planets and the vast empty space. And when this cosmos beyond the trivialities of living thi no, <laughs> and when this was done, she created seven other beings to dwell with her in and above the cosmos, beyond the trivialities of living things. Celeste is known to all people, for all cultures have some theory of creation. Even if her name may differ from place to place, the stories are the same, of a divine force that made all things, that raised the heavens, that gave the basic breath of life. The Skrellings of the Northern Islands call her Iksha, she beneath the waves, believing her to live in the abyssal caverns. The nomads who walk the upland moors name her as Telos, an old word not of their own language, which loosely translates as end or goal, perhaps naming what she has done. But most other folk, folk know her as Celeste, the name given to her during the time of the ancient empires. And as much the divine can as the divine can speak, it is said that she approves. She then made two noble lovers, Aurelian and the lady. Aurelian first, from iron and starfire and steel, a being of impossible strength and honor. His sword could cleave the earth. It is said that in ancient times, beyond all written history, the land was a single massive continent that Aurelian, driven to rage, brought his hammer down from the heavens and shattered the earth, creating the islands, Atolls and Archipelagos. He is worshipped by good-hearted folk as the deity of valor, gallantry and honorable combat. Ancient people sacrificed fettered cows and sheep the night before battle, both as a display of wealth, but also of piety. His image is common on the pottery of ancient ages, a great armored knight wielding a massive curved blade. So if we are a worshipper of him, we should probably considering blood sacrifice if we want to sacrifice something on the altar. Let's remember that. Well, then says combine serenity and starlight to make the lady. That's the goddess that we worship. A divine creature of immeasurable beauty and goodness. The lady took Aurelian as her lover. In mortal form, she appears as pure light. Though the most pious have said that she appears to them directly as a young woman of impossible beauty. She has been reported with black hair, red hair, gray eyes, green eyes. And she carries a small flute from which she plays sweet and haunting melodies. Certainly of the three good and noble deities, she figures least prominently in the histories. Aurelian and Celeste re uh, represent a kind of righteousness and power to which many civilizations aspire. But the lady has always had a small number of worshippers, often simple folks such as peasants or shepherds. 
She provides a kind of basic joy and happiness. And her devotees claim a closeness to the divine which the other deities do not provide. To balance these forces of good, Celeste then created two beings from the empty void of space. First, from the vacuum's inexorable cold, she created a being of winter, of dark magic, of killing and keening. This creature, appearing in human form as a bent crone, is the goddess known as Shiva. Believed to be the most cunning of the nine, she connives and schemes, taking interest in some living things and seeking the fall of others. She brings early frosts, killing crops, calls blizzards to kill livestock and children, delights in hardship and toil. But to her worshippers, Shiva grants great secrets. In exchange for blood sacrifice, she imparts ancient powers, teaching arcana that was lost when the world was young. But if Shiva represents a cold cunning, her ally embodies catastrophic strength. Formed of dark matter, the being known as Urgoth was made by Celeste as a counterbalance to Aurelian. Seen in earthly form as a massive shadow, taller than the highest mountain, Urgoth commands a terrifying horde of evil beasts, hydras and chimeras, goblins and ogres, nikors and bunjips. Throughout living history, he has brought terrors of fight, terrors to fight the creatures of good, rallied by Aurelian. And if Aurelian loves honorable combat and valor, Urgoth enjoys little more than wanton killing, maiming and gore. He delights in torment. His temples contain the dismembered and desiccated corpses of the sacrificed, who themselves are prisoners captured in battle and he demands the same cruel qualities of his initiates, who seek to sow chaos and destruction on a grand scale. After the creation of Urgoth, the differences between the five of them quickly became clear. Urgoth clashed with Aurelian. Shiva sought to undermine the goodness of the cosmos. And as the ages passed, they fought and fought. They fought as the galaxies formed and as the world took shape. And while the world was hot and lifeless, Celeste looked down and saw that there was a missing balance. To counter this, she created three more of her kind, with the desire that they would play the part of medi uh, mediators and judges, that they would help protect the universe from the sparring of the divine. <clears throat> to put life on the rocky world, she took stone and water and nesk and air and made herself another creator. Vidir was his name. Bringing him into being, Celeste taught him how to create and name things. He made oceans and land, birds and insects, all manner of life. He breathed life into everything by speaking its true name. I remember an NPC who worshipped this god, I am pretty sure. He taught the tall grass to sway and the mantis to strike. He taught fish to swim and then to leave the water to live on land. He made the first inhabitants of the world, those whose names are lost but known to him. He made the fair folk, giants, 
underlings. Later, elves and dwarfs, gnomes, goblins and ogres, men. Though bound to neutrality, the deer most frequently sides with the side of good. As it is said that Celeste granted a large portion of her own being when she created him. Within the earth she placed a massive firm, a world snake whose anger shakes the earth. Though the deer created the initial placement of the world, Voros enacts change through his wrath, raising mountains and erupting volcanoes. Living deep within the world, Voros sits apart from the rest of the divine, rarely speaking, rarely taking sides, content to watch the way things unfold. His strength is apocalyptic, tens of thousands of feet long. It is said he could reach from the earth and touch the moons in the heavens. His scales are set to glow a deep crimson, as if he is made from magma himself, and his eyes are a deep and unsettling yellow. Throughout history, people have long associated him with dragon kind. Worms are made in his image, of course, and is believed that his worship peaked during the historical period known as the Dragon Age. We read about this period yesterday when the Dragon Lords ruled the lands of man. Well, finally, Celeste made one more creature. She looked down at the world and saw that it was beautiful but static. Seasons came and went, but the world seemed to follow a set course. The deer had created beautiful, a beautiful thing. But even with Voros acting upon the world from below, the earth seemed predictable. So she made an agent of unpredictable change, a creature woven from probability and unpredictability who would warp the earth, causing strange and unexplainable events. She made him appear as a normal man, though cloaked. She granted him a companion, plucking a raven from mountain ash and granting it immortality. And then she set him loose. He wanders the plains and forests crosses the oceans on his back with his raven on his chest. And everywhere he goes, there are strange, unexplainable events. It is said that he makes buildings collapse or lovers meet, that empires have fallen at his whim and that others have formed in his wake. He was named by the tribes of the Western Plains as the Trickster. After he passed through their camp and a birthling buffalo produced a pure white calf. As this story spread, so did his name. And this divine being has been known as the trickster since. She made only seven, eight gods and goddesses, including her but they are unerringly referred to as the Nine. The Ninth was not made by her, but as something else entirely. The beast that existed before the universe and that shall surely last beyond. Pure blackness, pure evil. A force so terrible that the others imprisoned it in a place beyond the universe, in another reality altogether. Skjandugenga, a word from the wolf age. It means 
Shadow Walker, Light Eater. Though trapped in its unreality, parts of it poke and probe at the edges, testing its prism, manifesting briefly in the physical realm. These appear as masses of tendrils that writhe like a million snakes and attack with such force to raise entire islands. Skiandugenga attracts the most cruel and nihilistic creatures, those who seek the wholesale destruction of all things. Its servants can be identified by an ugly black mark on their forehead, a rune that pulses and bleeds, naming them as servants of the black god. Whew, that was pretty intense. But now we know a bit about these gods. So we are a servant of the lady, the goddess of harmony, of lovers, Let's see if we can do her justice. Talk to the Acolyte. Talk to the Priest of Celeste, since Celeste is the mother of our own god. Of course, we appreciate her. So, we've got all the flowers, I think. And now it's time to leave the starting town and level up without dying. Again, we start in this forest. I think starting in the forest is not a bad idea. There comes a spearman. We wait for him. Oh, he hit us for one. We are exhaust exposed. That's not good. Can we retreat until we're not exposed anymore? No, we cannot. He bashed the spearman. He is killed. Very good. That's, uh, that's Grub. He looks capable. Oh, that's not so good. Most goblins are short, nimble and cunning. Grub is none of these things. Large, lumbering, slow and incredibly stupid. Grub nonetheless maintains a goblin's love of senseless and terrifying violence. Walking with a permanent limp, he carries with him a very large, very sharp knife. This he puts to use at every opportunity. Against wildlife, livestock and just about anything slower than him. Okay, we are faster than him because he has a limp, I guess so. Still, I do not think that in level one we should take him lightly. Let's use the smite spell. In this direction. What happened? Oh damn, it's just range one. We have to use it again. Smite. You miss crowd. Damn, let's try it again. Smite. You lack focus. Oh, we've got two, two less. Our, our ma magic points are too low. Damn. Can we melee him? Let's try it. Oh, we're down to six HP. Not so good. He's badly wounded. And grab is killed. Hey, yeah, that was kind of close. Okay, we have very, very low magic points. Remember that. 9 HP. And we made a level. Very good. Let's increase alert, awareness, carrying, detection, literacy, magic. Yeah, that's what we start with. Now we've got all oh, that more than doubled our magic points. That's very good. And we've got 16 HP now. This first level up is so effective. Okay. The Kestra is killed with one hit. Very good. The Imp is dead too. We pick all these flowers. I don't know why I picked the flowers and nothing else, but somehow I like picking flowers. I've got the feeling that this might be helpful in the future. Flaming dart. That's shale. Oh, no, 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 no. We are blinded and almost dead. That's not good. 
Let's drink a potion. Blind. We have to drink something. Oh, lucky us. You feel better. Something summons a flaming dart. We have 11 HP now, but while we are blinded, we cannot do anything. Can, can we smite her? And I remember where she stands. Let's smite in this direction. You strike something, you feel your focus increase, something murmurs a few holy words. She, oh, she, she heals herself. We keep smiting. Oh, and we killed her. We killed her while we were blinded which our, with our smite spell. Whew. Lucky. And we gained a level. We continue with awareness, carrying, detection, literacy. And magic. And now let's retreat into the known territory. Okay, so she didn't drop anything. It's a bit sad. But that was an exciting fight. I was almost sure we would die when we were blinded at 2 HP. We couldn't even read her text. That's so sad. I have to get used to these uh, unique enemies, those named enemies. So uh, I will try to read all the text of the named guys. Apart from them, we should know most of the things. What's that? A grave? Nah, we're not a grave robber. We're a servant of the lady. It wouldn't fit at all. Okay, that's a lot of words. Can we... If they don't hit us, that's good. We gain another level. Awareness, detection, literacy, magic, and what did I forget? Carrying. Okay, the Frostling did some damage, but we killed them. Good. 26 HP. Now I think that's something we can say in general, that magic users are a lot more dangerous than uh, melee enemies in the beginning. Maybe this will change once we get really decent resistances, but uh, throughout all the pieces of the game, all the parts and pieces, things that brought us to the door of death all that killed us were mainly magic users so get over here to the second forest see if we can find something cool here we definitely will find some um, experience took a little damage a handful of verbena I, well, I'll pick that up I'll pick that up that sounds kind of cool It's a white flower. White flowers are the most important. We need them for our quest. It's a vox flower. We can also pick that. And we made another level. Continuing with the same skills we started with. of berries? No, let's not collect the berries. As far as I see it, food is not a problem, at least in the beginning. But these edible roots might be... I, I just picked them up so we have a little food reserve if things get tricky. the melee enemies. I'm not afraid of them. They're not so strong. They do a point of damage or two from time to time, although we have pretty little soaking. Okay, it's almost night. A healing potion. Excellent. How many healing potions do we have? We have got one healing potion, which is the third of our potion stack. So, Let's leave this and go here to the graveyard. It's pretty dark now. Now the reason why I do not focus on ranged weapons is because uh, 
most of the dangerous enemies that we met in the dungeon can disappear in the in the walls and uh, as far as I saw they are unhittable by ranged weapons at that time while against the melee enemies I feel pretty safe uh, the see thief he stole something from us and teleported away give our money back where did the guy go I hope he will give us back our money soon was this our money maybe Talk to the boy and pick up all the silver flowers. Uh, we took some damage here. Let's regenerate that. pretty cool that in the dark it's pretty much impossible to see the color of the flowers okay we can see the color with ah uh, we got exposed but we killed the thief that's good back at full hp very good Okay, we're done here. Let's see how we do against these guys. Like this. Uh, it's just a thief. We killed another thief. Very good. I want to get our religion higher as well. One, two, three, four, five. And scribing. One, two, three, four, five. We are wise men. Thirty-seven. Twenty-seven. Not good. Not good. Not good. And we are stunned. Can we retreat from here? 23. Okay, that's good. We got away a step. Try to get to a distance. Okay, we're not stunned. We're not stunned anymore. Let's retreat and regenerate. That's the fight for which, for which we have to use our magic, I think. I want to try the other spell. Let's see if it has a range of two. You feel limber, you feel your focus increase. And uh, what happened? Okay, that's something we cast on ourselves. Interesting. Soften. Let us smite him. You feel your focus increase. What does that mean that our focus increases? Smite him again. And we killed him. Very good. The black card is down. Twice might seems to do the job. Or once against this guy. No, but I don't think we want to go in here yet. We do that later. And first, let's go up here and kill some birds. Talk to item quickly. We could identify the silver flowers, the potions, and the almond. The silver flowers can be identified. That's interesting. We will do so sooner or later. Maybe we do so now. Let's identify the silver flowers. Let's do that. Let me tell you a little about that. So let's look at the silver flowers now. Um, white flower, na, 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 na. where are the silver flowers? Verbena, magenta white flower, white flower, vox flower, vox flower, let's check that, what's that? It's muteness, okay, that's pretty cool, if that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. It is, it is muteness. Let's see if you can identify more for us. Like, for example, this slimy potion. No, we need more gold. Or more ivy to get the rest identified. We're at 40 HP. 30, 29. Oh, that's not good. Let us let's smite him. Good. And retreat. Regenerate. Oh, 
Okay, it's almost like almost day again. I'd like to try this once. Let's do that now. This blessed wand. Did not is a digging wand and the other one. Teleport. Okay, teleport is good to have. Oh my god, we're, fast, we're almost dead. 15 HP. Smite. Killed him, good. Still 15 HP, but we've got a lot of... And we killed the other one, very good. I just hope we won't run out of castings. <coughs> Foraging improves. Medicine improves. Bludgeons. Okay, bludgeons is also good. That's uh, our melee skill. But we have to wait here for a while until we are back at full HP. Uh, these bird fights. They are not trivial. Not trivial at all. So, back to full HP. I think uh, we might just eat the rook's cops. And maybe pick up the throwing club just for a ranged weapon. 16 throwing clubs. Take this as ammunition. We hit. We killed the frog with the throwing club. Nice. We don't want to change our name yet. But if somebody of you guys has an idea how this character should be named, let me know. <laughs> I don't really want to call him by a name of a guy I don't really like <laughs> throughout the whole game. <laughs> A bit strange, I think. Okay. We know this is a dangerous place, so we just pick up this key and retreat. Let's see what we get in here. 39, 36, 34, 30, 28, got them. 30. The boots, the leather armor, the chain mill, and I think the chain mill is definitely the better armor compared to our wayfarer's clothes. Yes, it is. Let's equip the chain mill. Gets us up to seven points of soaking. Not bad. Shadow bombs and fire bombs. I think we better smite this guy. It is dumbstruck. Feel your focus increase. Try that again. Misses us. It is wounded. I think we should smite it to death. It is near death. Can we melee it? Ah, it almost took one quarter of our HP. We smite it one more time. Not take a risk. And that gains us another level. This time, let us increase our literacy to 40. And magic, because I want to focus on these things. Pick the great sword, pick the heavy cloak, the iron shield, the iron boots, and the shell armor. 
Now again, that's the question. I think we should use that stuff. Um, the iron shield here, but the iron shield is it, it is worse. I, I take I go for the for the bigger complete number. And here, I go for the shell armor though, because it has more protection. A round body. Let's take this, and for the boots. Nope, the leather boots are better. Cool, we found some pretty nice uh, stuff here. Now I'm feeling a bit more comfortable about. Oh, dum 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 dum. That's a blood talk. Smite. This dumbstruck, that's probably not bad. Smite it again. Misses us, that's good. And it's wounded. It is still wounded. It is still wounded. Can't we kill it? 29. It is. Can we not kill it? Oh, you missed the blood talk. Damn. Miss it again. Miss it again. But oh, damn, we don't get it. Can we melee it? Oh no, that hurt. Can we outrun it? No, it doesn't look good. Can we soften it? Uh, I think we got softened. Oh damn. Guess we have to drink our healing potion. And continue trying to smite it, but we miss it all the time. And we're almost. Oh, we have to try to run away. Seven. Oh, five. Whew, what can we do? We have to pray, I think. Lady, help us. Yeah, the lady protects us. Now we have to wait to get one step away from him if we can. Come on, birdie. You don't want to follow us. You want to follow us. Oh, and we smited it. This time it worked. Whew. Holy moly. Let's get away from here. This bird. What a beast. So let's go back to town and sell some stuff. I think we are pretty heavily loaded. We got dexterity and agility already, by the way. Also willpower. So stats are getting upwards. So what do we want to sell? Hmm. -hmm. Firebombs? Shadow bomb? Don't know. No, let's keep them. Let's sell the metal cap. Let's sell the buckler. Let's sell the leather boots. All these pieces of armor that we are not wearing, we can sell them all. Wayfarer's clothes, iron boots, iron shield, and chainmail. Sell that as well. Uh, we can sell the Book of the Nine. No, we cannot sell it. Okay, doesn't surprise me, but we don't need it anymore. Anything else we want to drop and sell? Yeah, there were some weapons, I think. Um, oops. We keep the pickaxe, but we sell the mace, the spear, all spears, the long spear. Sell the battle axe too, and sell the great sword. Yeah, that gave us quite a bit of ivory. And with this ivory, we could, just to be safe, we could go up here again and uh, identify some stuff that we might need in the dungeon. The slimy potion. For 150, that's an unstoning potion. And the other one is an unstoning potion too. Okay, we've got two unstoning potions now. Not bad. Now, let's go and finish our first quest. Oh, self-assured. Foraging improves. 
knowledgeable about medicine, bloodshed's improve, and thrown bloodshed's improve too. That's not bad. So let's uh, see if we can finish this location now. Here comes. Black card, but uh, okay. He's wounded. Can we kill it? Let's see if we can melee it. Yes, we can. Good. I want to save our smitings if possible. So we don't have that many left. So let's smite him. That's the guy we want to smite. You smite Barrow Thief. He is badly wounded. Let's smite him to death. And we kill him. Nicey. Boss fight one. Um, awareness. Carrying. This time. And what did he drop? What's that? A number of items. That's a throwing club that we threw at him. And that's an unknown scroll. It's another throwing club. Perfect. pick up the sun gem and now let's see what the plowman gives us if we give the sun gem to him the plowman exclaims the sun gem how beautiful take these herbs they shall not burden you and you will not hunger the plowman says you look like you could learn a thing more about botany let me teach you so we get from him silver weeds, lots of silver weeds, and also I'm pretty sure we got a new, a new skill here. Boating, no herbalism. Yeah, we got some points in herbalism. Not bad, not bad. Okay, and now I think it's time to go to the Dungeon of Doom and Death. The first level should be easy. We can pretty much rush through there, I think. And one thing I like is uh, last time we found inside these dungeons lots of spell books. And now we will be able to make use of them. Now we don't need alcohol. Oh, that's a bomb trap. Lucky the bomb didn't. Oh, it did explode. What's that? Oh, what's that on us? Stoning. Oh, damn. I remember stoning. Let us quickly drink an unstoning potion. Whew. I remember this trap. That's how we lost our first character. Almost happened again. Luckily, this time we had a potion to counter it. Linothorax. Wasn't that a good thing? Let's try it. Linothorax. It's 4, 2. It's for a total of 6, while ours is a total of 5. Let's do that. And it's a lot lighter than our old armor. I don't think there is a reason to carry the shell armor around through the whole dungeon, so let's drop it here. And we can pick it up once we leave the dungeon. Salted fish, earthen brandy. No, we really don't want to have a party in here. This guy did one point of damage. Another scroll we don't know. We could just read the scrolls we don't know. What do you think? Should we just read the scrolls? Let's read the unknown scrolls. You cause your surroundings to shimmer. And this here? 
The earth becomes more bright. Maybe that's a light scroll. What's this here? Things suddenly feel more dangerous. A scroll of danger. Ah, I'm not sure if that's good. Whiskey. Moat and dagger. Uh, dagger. Scroll of monster summoning. Aha. That's apparently one of them that we have already identified. The acolyte can cast spells, so we have to take care. But we're done with this level. Okay, one of the scrolls was magic mapping. See, we have got an overview over the tiles, even outside of what we have uh, scouted. And uh, that means... We identified a magic mapping scroll. Don't need a fishing rod though. Let's go down here. Okay, take care on our HP. That was one point of damage. First one is dead, one damage, two damage, good. Oh, what happened now? We are poisoned. Okay, let's just wait till we're not poisoned anymore. 49, 46, 44, 43, and we're not poisoned anymore. That's good. We could just outweigh the poison. Good to know. It's an iron shield. We might try if that's better than our shield. Iron shield. No, it's worse. So let's drop it in front of the stairs. You can pick it up on the way back up. One point of damage, another point of damage. Oh, the damage is totally insignificant that they do. Blank scroll, an ink pot, I don't, eh, if we pick up a blank scroll, we should maybe also pick up the ink pot. Makes no sense to take just one of them. <laughs> yeah, let's take the ink pot. There's three points of damage and he explodes for a couple of points of damage. A Samuel Ben Spellbook. Let's see if we can read that. The runes describe strange magic. Continue. Let's try it. Didn't work. Okay, maybe we have to get better at reading first. Okay, that was 14 points of damage from this guy. Samuel Ben, is that multiple spells maybe? Uh, I know we have a German word called Sammelband, which means, ouch, that hurt, 10 points of damage, but the others died, that's good. We are poisoned again. Let's see if we can, yeah, we can wait out the poison, very good. And we're getting hungry. You cannot... Okay, we, we had something to eat with us, didn't we? We've got food rations. Let's eat one of the food rations. So as soon as we're just hungry, not super hungry or starving, we cannot wait anymore. Foraging goes up. Medicine. Bludgeons. You feel blessed by the divine. What did that mean? I don't know. Throwing swords. Nah. Let's pick up the spinach just for, for food. It's another wand of digging. Cool. P 
pick up the crossbow. Okay, that's a trap room, obviously. Let's wait till we can see again. Okay. We found a way through that trap room. That's all I wanted. Let's check this scroll. Two times monster summoning, a, bl a couple of blank scrolls, but also this scroll. You repel the uh, adjacent creatures. Ah, yeah, okay, that's what it does. Still no identify. <laughs> Where are we? Okay, we got teleported out there. That was a teleport trap, apparently. I'd like to get to the last room. But maybe we can get an easier way if we just zap our digging wand. Yep, that seems to work. Okay, take care. That looks very dangerous. 46. Okay, 41. Can we kill the green guy? 36. Mm-hmm. I guess we better smite. Affects you. Uh oh. Can we smite it to death? It's badly wounded. Smite it again. Oh, that doesn't look good. Smiting doesn't work against him. Not like I wanted it to. But we killed the first guy. Can we kill this guy too without it killing us? The lightning thing. 19 still, and we killed it. Retreat, regenerate. Whew, that was a bit tricky. So many of these lightning clouds and poison clouds at once. Let's see if it was worth if there's something cool waiting for us. Okay, even more of them. And more of them, more lightning bugs. That's what it is. But I think the lightning bugs are not so dangerous. They, so far, they don't do really a lot of damage to us. Five to awareness. Let's also raise our religion. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, we're a priest, aren't we? Or uh, something like that. Another unknown scroll. We read that. A dungeon leading deep into the earth. The stairs are scarred with ancient runes. You arrive somewhere else. You finish reciting the scroll labeled. Okay. Haha. Uh -huh. It was the scroll that brought us out of the dungeon. Well, if that's the case, I think that's a good timing to end this episode. We can just sell the stuff that we still got in our inventory. Like... What do we want to sell? I didn't take the armor pieces with me. Hmm. I don't think we have anything anything to sell. Anyways, guys, I think that was a successful first episode. We survived this time. But like I told you guys, I don't want this guy to be called Bart until the end of the run. Has any one of you got a nice suggestion for a name? If so, let me know in the comments. And this will be the name that our character bears from the next episode on. <laughs> Until then, thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you all again for the next episode. And bye, everybody.